Hey there, in this video I'm going to talk about how we can use SciPy to calculate the Fourier transform for us. So, uh, first thing we need to do is import the right module out of SciPy. So, from SciPy, we want to import FFTPack. And in FFTPack, we've got some stuff but uh, the stuff we're going to end up using here is uh, FFT which stands for fast Fourier transform um, DCT discrete cosine transform will be one we'll use a little bit a little bit later on uh, IFFT is the inverse uh, IDCT is the inverse discrete cosine transform and there are sort of variations on these things that live in here as well So FFT stands for Fast Fourier Transform, and so what makes it fast? Uh, well, we've learned how to do a discrete transform. We saw it was a summation. It was not at all hard to code. Um, it's a little bit slow because you've got to go through like a for loop, some kind of loop here, doing a summation each time. But what makes the Fast Fourier Transform faster is it exploits some nice properties of discrete Fourier, uh, discrete Fourier transforms. In particular, it turns out that the DFT of a single point is the point itself, no change at all. And it turns out that if you can find the DFT of a short array A and a different array B, then there's actually a, a pretty easy relationship that gives you the discrete Fourier transform of the array A and B concatenated. So basically you start with just individual points and you concatenate them to build your entire array. Uh, the only part of the workings that you really need to know about is that the algorithm is most efficient when the size of the array is a power of two because of how it's dividing up, and the uh, algorithm is least efficient when the length of the array is a prime number. Now in practice this won't really matter unless the array is absolutely gigantic, so even if you have like a thousand things in it, it, it really doesn't matter if you say a thousand three versus a thousand twenty four, even if in principle a thousand twenty four is more efficient. Okay, so anyway we're going to call FFT, and if we look at what is it looking for here, uh, we pretty much just need a single argument, which is the array x here that we want to transform. Keeping in mind that we're going to get a complex array out of this thing. So uh, let's try it out. Let's start with a real simple array. We'll make it, well, I mean, we'll just code this one by hand. Uh, we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then let's FFT this thing. We'll call it C, just to use the names we've had before, and let's print what's in C. Okay, so we get some complex numbers. Not so surprising. Uh, we should also see there's some symmetry here. So like if we look at the last value, negative 2.5 minus 3.44j, we can see here it's plus 3.44j. Uh, likewise, these two are complex conjugates of one another. And so if we plot it, and by plot it, I mean really plot the absolute value of it, the magnitude of it, uh, we should see that symmetry reflected in our plot. Okay, so yeah, sure enough, there's the symmetry in our plot. We can see how these are kind of like mirror images of each other. Um, again, kind of analogous to those negative coefficients in the continuous Fourier transform. It, we'll talk more about what's going on there in just another video or so. Anyway, let's come back to, to doing the inverse transform. So if I do IIF I F F T of C, I should get back the original Y. I'm going to give it a different name. I'm going to call it Y again, just to check how does it actually compare to what I started with. So my original array, I mean, this was all, these are all real values. Let's look at what we get here, transforming back. So we see that by default, we're going to get complex numbers coming out of these because in the most general case, your answer is complex numbers. Uh, but, you know, since we transformed and then untransformed, we got back exactly the same 1 plus 0j, 2 plus 0j, and so on. Uh, and so, you know, in this case, yeah, they're, they're the same, just we changed the data type is the only real difference here. Usually that's not a problem. Um, what sort of things can happen here, just, just so you're aware of it, it's like, let's say I wanted to plot y again. It's going to yell at me. Not happy. Uh, well, it's not happy because I spelled it wrong. Of course not. All right. So it's it's saying complex warning, complex to real discards the imaginary part. So what happens here is by default matplotlib, if you give it complex numbers, will ignore the imaginary part and just plot the real part. 
but it also yells at you. So even though all the imaginary parts were zero and like this is fine, it's not very nice to have code that spits out warning messages. So just be aware of this. You know, the solution here is just to explicitly say, I only want the real values or uh, equivalently just to plot the absolute value. Okay, uh, so that's all for this video. It's a short one. Uh, using FFT is pretty easy. Um, more, you know, what takes a little bit more brain power is figuring out what's going on with the with this weird mirror imaging here in our coefficients. And we'll do that in the next video.